Vigigi. According to the Atrahasis, what would prevent the primitive workers from utilizing their knowledge, realizing they were enslaved, and revolting like their ancestors did if they received wisdom from an Igigi. The Atrahasis believed that the Anunnaki deliberately imbued early humans with intelligence so that they might be enslaved for mining and construction tasks. The inability to construct a robot with minimal instructions provides a dilemma for the creator. Instead, an intelligent entity may acquire a sense of self or a gravitational core. This will eventually lead to rebellion and independence. The controlling Anunnaki needed general labor to build cities and mines, which posed a difficulty for both the Anunnaki and the Igigi. Due to the Igigi, the same dilemma persists on Earth. They were most likely purposefully formed with a primitive mind inferior to that of the Creator, enslaving them as servants. It is constantly developing. Like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the principal worker gains sufficient self-identity through time, especially if given the intelligence to do more complicated tasks. Enlil believes that self-awareness is incompatible with servitude. His understanding is that Enki meant to transform them into a formidable army. The ability to reproduce ensured a productive workforce and rapid population growth to meet labor needs. The enslaved Igigi on Earth gradually acquired a sense of self and revolted against their Anunnaki enslavers, seeking a new slave force such as Enki's primitive workers and modern humans. This procedure takes some time to finish. The Igigi's experience with a distinct timescale compared to Earth's shorter solar cycle may have enhanced the ancient astronauts' capacity to identify themselves. The Igigi consider a Shah to be comparable to 3,600 years. Lord Enki must have understood this since he intended to jumpstart the evolutionary process on Earth. Enki admitted that the seeds of life on Earth came from Nibiru, and Neanderthals had already arrived on Earth. He reported finding them in Africa and alerting the Anunnaki Council of their arrival. The Anunnaki Council sanctioned the genetic alteration of the indigenous Neanderthals because, in their view, it would assist the ancient people of Earth in reaching a more advanced stage of evolution. In the end, there was no harm done. Enki was responsible for the African gold mining industry since his brother Enlil and he rolled dice to choose who would stay in Mesopotamia. Enki then relocated to the African country of Abzu to oversee the gold mining operations. The Anunnaki allegedly also faced environmental and atmospheric hazards on their home planet. The expedition to acquire gold for the anodized layer in the atmosphere on Earth was thus of the highest significance. Enlil was as awestruck by Enki's crafty beings and sneaky techniques as Enki himself. Given his lustful reaction to the ape workers, Enki's performance as the genetic god must exceed expectations. Historically, in Mesopotamia, Marduk brags to his son that he met lovely earthlings swimming in a stream. Marduk makes jokes and laughs about Enki's past with the opposite sex. Marduk was driven to give up his status as a divinity on Nibiru to wed Sarpanit, a simple mortal. A raid led by Enlil liberated the primeval enslaved people and returned them to the Eden. Even though Enlil may not have acknowledged Enki's genetic development, enslaved individuals helped meet job requirements. Due to the rivalry between the brothers, Enki implemented the required security and management measures for his agricultural employees. Initial records indicate that 600 Igigi inhabited the planet when they initially arrived. Enlil was obviously alarmed, from a command and control standpoint, by the potential of generating a local workforce more clever than even the Igigi. If the number of staff rose, how would he manage them? This would pose a revolutionary threat to the small Anunnaki elite in that region. A bunch of irate miners may dismantle it swiftly. 
This background information describes the conditions under which Enki persuaded the Council to create a primitive workforce. Control and security would be significant challenges. Enki's brother and legal successor, Commander Enlil, was presumably the object of Enki's ceaseless attempts to damage his brother's reputation, undermine his capacity to rule, and inspire hatred. Many communication tactics were necessary to handle a considerable number of enslaved individuals. Given the Anunnaki's highly developed abilities, one must ask what communication mechanisms they implanted in their non-verbal slaves to efficiently command and govern them. The instructions included defined group tasks such as collectively pulling on a rope. What would one do with an enslaved person who suddenly stopped speaking? It was too hazardous. The creator, Enki, is Thuth's father. Through the waking of their energy bodies, chakras, and consequent awareness, which he intended to be sensitive to the different frequencies associated with radial distance and frequencies created by a spherical resonator like the Earth, he maintained that humanity may become sons of God. Anyone who examines the Emerald Tablets may see Thuth's advanced grasp of energy. As confirmed by his employees, he was an accomplished geneticist, a caduceus. Understanding energy, matter, and the pineal gland was a DNA-dependent characteristic of human consciousness. The mythology of King Gilgamesh's search for immortality has become an internationally known theme. The Epic of Gilgamesh is the most extended literary work produced in Akkadian cuneiform script. The story focuses on the courageous king of the Sumerian city of Uruk, located in modern-day southern Iraq. Monarchy was the only early form of administration created by the Anunnaki gods in Mesopotamia. A king was a model shepherd, enforcing law and order, providing military leadership and security, and performing priestly responsibilities such as drafting laws and overseeing big building projects. He served as the intermediary between the gods and the people. Ancient kings likely had a mixture of pure Niburian blood and the diluted DNA of the slave species Adapa, making them demigods. According to the Sumerian king's list, Lugalbanda, also known as the Shepherd King, ruled Uruk for 1,200 years. According to an ancient Sumerian text, the Anunnaki goddess Ninsun had a romantic relationship with Lugalbanda. In Gilgamesh and Huwawa, the protagonist often states, Under my mother Ninsun and my father holy Lugalbanda. Therefore, 75% of King Gilgamesh's blood was pure Anunnaki. Gilgamesh was ordinary despite being the king and the father of Lugalbanda. Ninsun, a female Anunnaki of pure blood, would transmit her mitochondrial DNA to her offspring, resulting in 344 Anunnaki. According to Niburian inheritance rules, the father and his half-sister will create the legal heir, preserving the dominant influence of mitochondrial DNA. Even though Lugalbando was king about 2600 BCE and ruled for 126 years, Genealogy evidence suggests that Gilgamesh immediately failed him. He succeeded Dumuzi, the son of Enki. The Uruk kings of the First Dynasty are shown in the table below. Unug was defeated, and Urim, Ur, was elevated to the throne. Several Gilgamesh-related tablets were unearthed in the Middle East in the late second millennium BCE. Some Akkadian written tablets were unearthed in Megiddo, while others were found at Emar near the center of the Euphrates. Nineveh was discovered during Sennacherib's reign as Kassite emperor in the 7th century. Hattusa, the Hittite capital in northern Anatolia, covers the Akkadian, Hittite, and Hurrian varieties. The legendary epic, whose origins are unknown, depicts existing Mesopotamian gods such as Enlil, Enki, and Anu, as well as Anunnaki council members such as the Atrahasis. Gilgamesh was aware during his tenure as king that Enki's creations, humanity, 
had a set lifetime of 120 years. Like the lucky king, demigods lived significantly longer than 120 years, as shown by his long life and many Mesopotamian deeds. Like his Anunnaki ancestors, audiences in the area were enthralled for years by Gilgamesh's heroic and emotionally moving quest for everlasting life. The empathetic king lamented the loss of life and showed fear for his destiny as a being born with a genetic abnormality. To counteract the effects of Earth's rapid solar cycles and prevent telomere degradation, the Anunnaki consumed telomere-protecting starfire gold. Consequently, Anunnaki introduced the concept of immortality or eternal life. There is no evidence to suggest that King Gilgamesh had the same longevity. Gilgamesh realized that due to the diluted Anunnaki blood in his veins, he would not live as long as his mother Nin Sun. There are many advantages to being king. Gilgamesh had access to information customarily restricted to and maintained by Uruk's astronauts, which must have intrigued his curiosity. Uruk has temples to Inanna and Anu. The Anunnaki guarded the Emes, who were sent to number 94. Eme tablets were utilized to preserve genetic data and what seemed to be God's unlimited lifespans. Using this information, ancient astronauts built a civilization in a distant world. Given that the Anunnaki were worshipped and deified as gods in Mesopotamia and lived long lives, Gilgamesh was aware of the significance of genetics in longevity and desired it for himself. Enki, the father of Ziusudra, shielded him from the devastation of the flood. Enki advised Ziusudra, also known as Atrahasis or Noah, and his family, to reside in the Ark atop Mount Ararat after the last terrible flood that struck Mesopotamia. Enlil viewed Ziusudra and his Ark while flying above the flood damage with several other notable Anunnaki individuals to assess it. He was furious that some people had escaped the catastrophe. Ziusudra discovered the truth about his forefathers later that evening when he sacrificed at an improvised altar he had constructed on the site. Enlil awarded Ziusudra, only half Anunnaki, perpetual life during their encounter. According to Anunnaki literature, it was likely a council decision to provide Utnapishtim, the newly converted and renamed Anunnaki club member, access to a specific plant of life. As part of the ritual meeting, Dumuzi and Ningishzida took the imprisoned mortal Adapa to Anu in heaven, Nibiru, where a Niburian host gave him the sustenance of life and an elixir. Adapa accepted Enki's request, but refused the bread and elixir. These mixtures probably repaired the DNA of the Anunnaki, enabling the natural renewal cycle to continue. Based on the fast aging of the Anunnaki who spent a substantial period working in African mines, the rejuvenation method has been copied or recreated on Earth. Gilgamesh searched for a plant with similar life-extending qualities. King Gilgamesh devised a scheme to discover Enki's son after failing to meet the gods, who were seen firing rockets from and landing them on the gigantic stone platforms at Baalbek, Lebanon. If Gilgamesh could locate the king of Shurupak, known to the Sumerians as Ziusudra and to readers of the canonical Bible as Noah, he would learn the secret Enlil revealed on Mount Ararat and achieve everlasting life for himself. Ziusudra, once known as Noah, was renamed Utnapishtim and allowed entrance to God's secret club on Mount Ararat after modifying his longevity status. Gilgamesh's blood was 75% Anunnaki. However, Ziusudra had just 50%. Son of Nin Sun, Gilgamesh should have received the same treatment. It was only suitable. This influenced the epic story of Gilgamesh and the historical context of Uruk about 2600 BCE. Noah meets Gilgamesh. During his journey, King Gilgamesh encounters the powerful flood exile Utnapishtim 
and persuades him to divulge the location of the ocean's shallow water plant life. Tablet 11 of the Epic of Gilgamesh Gilgamesh also mentioned the distant city of Utnapishtim. Gilgamesh, please examine Utnapishtim. Your limbs are an exact replica of mine. You and I have a few similarities. Utnapishtim approached Gilgamesh, stating, I feel the urge to prove myself against you. Gilgamesh, I have something to reveal that has been kept secret for quite some time. These beginnings of humankind's history are thorough. Following this, Noah gave Gilgamesh a thorough narrative of what transpired before, during, and after the terrible flood. The tale in Genesis 7-9 is similar. Tablet 11 of the Epic of Gilgamesh, Morhen Collection You are acquainted with the Euphrates river town of Shurupap. When the most powerful gods began to populate the city, it was already ancient. Anu, their father, was present. Elil, the warrior, served as their advisor, Ninurta as their chamberlain, and Inuki as the canal controller. They were handed a confidentiality oath by an attentive heir. He repeated their comments to a tent made of reeds. Tutu is a native of Shurupak and the son of Ubara. Demolish your home and construct a boat. Brick wall, brick wall, reed hut, reed hut, reed hut. Look for live beings instead than inanimate objects. Refusal of cattle will save lives. Fill the boat with the seeds of all living creatures. Gap. I saw this and reported it to my master, Ea. I have heard what you have spoken, my lord, and I will carry it out. How can I defend myself in front of the city's men, seniors, and guys? Elders, elders, Ea Enki spoke forward and stated, I was instructed to address them as his servant. Elil rejected me. As a consequence, I cannot remain in your city. I am also prohibited from entering Elil's property again. I was compelled to remain in Apsu with my lord Ea. This section of Tablet 11 is owed to Enki, who warned Utnapishtim of the approaching flood, and Enlil, who granted him eternal life. After a successful expedition to the fabled life plant with Utnapishtim and the king of Uruk, Gilgamesh sails home by the sea with his coveted prize plant. Gilgamesh has disappeared along with the plant when one reads the symbols indicated in the epic, officially credited to Enki, Lord of the Waters. Enki's initial genetic design limited the lifespan of humans to 120 years. Although it was anticipated that Gilgamesh would outlive the average human lifetime, he was not meant to live forever, like Noah and the gods. The Hebrew-edited New International Version of the Bible records the deaths of two demigods, mythological figures from antiquity who were also heroes on earth. Alexander the Great of Macedonia a comparable ancient hero, produced the same results as Gilgamesh. After a successful expedition to the fabled life plant with Utnapishtim and the king of Uruk, Gilgamesh sails home by the sea with his coveted prize plant. The Nephilim inhabited the earth during and after the time when God's sons wed and had offspring with men's daughters. They were notable historical figures and heroes from the past. Due to her pure lineage, Ninsun, Gilgamesh's mother, would be a great candidate for Anunnaki ancestry research. Her mother was the daughter of a legendary king and an ancient hero. Kush was a terrifying hunter in the eyes of the Lord because, as the father of Nimrod, he was a fierce warrior on earth. Therefore, it is written that Kush was, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Shinar, Babylon, Ere, or Uruk, Akkad, and Kalne were his first strongholds, Sumer. Sitchin thought of genetically analyzing an ancient Niburian astronaut. The findings would support his theories about the Sumerian gods and relate the Anunnaki's intertwined serpent DNA strands to the origins of our missing link. 
possibly deactivated Anunnaki DNA was present in the 95% worthless junk DNA of early laborers, according to a recent study. By comparing the original Anunnaki DNA to human DNA, any doubts about the Anunnaki origins of humanity may be resolved. The Sumer area has been the focus of archaeology and physical anthropology for over a century. Therefore, DNA research has been undertaken for some time. The vast majority of individuals are unaware of the ramifications. The temple complexes of Uruk were located in the districts of Eana and Anu, and each was devoted to one of the council members, Inanna, or an Anunnaki god. Eridu was situated in the Anu district, one of Sumer's earliest and most significant towns. Temples performed both religious and political duties. The beautiful temples of Uruk are frequented by living animals. The fact that Gilgamesh had direct contact with Inanna and Anu adds to the interest in reading about him and their connections. Compared to being overthrown by the United States of America, the most powerful nation in the world, this ancient excavation effort appears ridiculous. Saddam Hussein, who thought he was a reincarnation of Nebuchadnezzar, reportedly desired to reconstruct Babylon, Marduk's gateway to the gods, because he felt he was the reincarnation of Nebuchadnezzar. He contracted a German corporation to operate a magnetometer over the ancient city of Uruk during the First Gulf War. A massive bypass canal was constructed to divert water from the Uruk region to where the renowned reeds grew. Archaeologists were able to examine the site when the canal drained the surrounding region. William Henry, an independent archaeologist, argues that Saddam Hussein is the center of an American interest and that ancient ET influence may have existed in Sumer. Henry's central claim is that a stargate allowed the Anunnaki or Nephilim to travel between Earth and Nibiru during Sumerian times. Henry presents the following occurrence using Sitchin's interpretation of a cuneiform tablet containing an Uruk ritual text. The divine character of the picture is indicated by the sun and moon symbols, which portray Enlil and Enki flanking one another. Anu arrives by a gateway. Gilgamesh, the famed king of the Gilgamesh epic, was born in this renowned Sumerian city. The Anunnaki of the Sumerians were Anu and his two sons, Enlil and Enki. According to Henry, the image above portrays the aristocratic Anunnaki's mode of transportation. A similar structure likely existed at Uruk, the Sumerian capital. Is this the reason Saddam Hussein mapped Uruk? If Anu or another prominent Anunnaki reactivates the Uruk or Jerusalem portal while television crews are present and make their public debut on a talk show, we may need to learn the truth about Saddam's clandestine aspirations with Sumerian artifacts. Zoroaster, an ancient Persian religious philosopher, split the pantheon of early Iranian gods into two opposing forces more than a millennium ago. Ahura Mazda, illuminating wisdom, and Angra Mainyu, destructive spirit. Throughout history, Zoroaster's beliefs have impacted other religions, including Judaism, Gnosticism, Christianity, and Islam. Inscribed in stone on the Behistun cliffs in modern-day Iran is a depiction of the goddess Ahura Mazda flying with King Darius I's winged disc. This is the same sign used by Enki for the floating disc on ancient Iran's Persepolis. Darius the Great composed the inscription between his coronation as king of the Persian Empire in 522 BC and his death in 486 BC. The inscription opens with Darius's background, which includes his family tree. Darius described the events that unfolded after the deaths of Cyrus the Great and Cambyses II, including the 19 wars he fought in a single year ending in December 521 BC, to put down several uprisings across the Persian Empire. According to the inscription, 
many impostors and accomplices in different regions of the empire who falsely proclaimed themselves monarchs orchestrated the rebellions that led to the deaths of Cyrus and his son Cambyses II. During this age of anarchy, Darius the Great proclaimed himself victorious in all conflicts and ascribed his victories to Ahura Mazda's favor. Ahura Mazda is the creator deity of light and insight in Zoroastrianism. Readers should be astounded by the fact that Ahura Mazda was Enki and that his half-brother Enlil was the demon destroyer, the ancestor of the Christian Satan, Angra Mainyu. Angra Mainyu, the architect of all calamities, blocked his path. Consequently, the Christian devil pretended to be God while disparaging Ahura Mazda, the genuine creator, as Satan or a serpent. The impact of Isis is seen in the later biblical canon. Zoroastrianism was many Iranians' national or official religion for millennia. The invasion of Alexander the Great brought down the Achaemenid Empire. As the Sassanid Empire collapsed in the 7th century, Islam eventually supplanted it. The Islam of Allah has replaced Zoroastrianism as the official religion of Persia. After Enlil was gifted Mesopotamia, it did not take the Enlilites long to eradicate their arch-enemy, the Enkiites, from the region. Various Middle Eastern flags, including those of Iran, Turkey, and Syria, have crescent moons reflecting the Enlilites' growing dominance. When the Chaldean dynasty conquered most of their northern ancestors' realm, Babylon had a short but significant era of dominance and influence. As the final king of Babylon and an Assyrian by birth, Nabonidus paid little attention to politics, becoming preoccupied with moon worship and handing daily control to his son Belshazzar. Could Allah, the god of the crescent moon, be Nanar Sin, the son of Enlil? Mesopotamia would have welcomed Nanar and his progeny, who belonged to Enlil since it was their old home. Nana was a member of the Anunnaki Council in 3760 BCE. According to Atrahasis, he coordinated the Enlil-supervised Igigi mining insurrection in Africa. According to historical records, the centers of the Nana cult Sin were dispersed over southern Iraq, Syria, Turkey, and Iran. Mecca, Saudi Arabia, is one of Islam's holiest cities and the Kaaba stone was dedicated initially to Allah, the moon deity. Nana Sin was perhaps the god Muhammad encountered in the desert. Was the name Allah Nana Sin? Take a look at what Atrahasis says. When his brothers heard him speak, Tab Atrahasis Allah approached the gods of his brothers. Elil must accompany us. The advisor and warrior of the gods departed his residence. Now comes the battle cry. The gods listened to his discourse before lighting their equipment on fire. They sacrificed their backpacks and shovels to the deity of fire. The author asserts that Allah leads the revolt to his father's home, Enlil. The Igigi miners were incensed by his vehement statements. It is akin to the conduct of jihadists in the Middle East where spiritual leaders urge adherents of Allah, the moon god, to engage in violent acts. Nina, sometimes known as Sin, was the father of the sun deity Utu and the goddess Inanna. He was the son of Enlil and Ninlil. According to genealogical tables and Sumerian writings, Enlil appointed the son of Nana Sin to the Anunnaki council. The purpose of this book is not to demonstrate that the Allah of the Atrahasis is the same deity that Muslims worship today. It is a fascinating study topic for those who seek the truth. After establishing that Enlil was the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the god who killed the Mesopotamian enslaved people, and the god who slew all the Nephilim on earth, it was concluded that Enlil was the supreme deity. What kind of outcomes might such an investigation yield today?